Hello Irish fans, welcome back to NDTV. My name is Trey Cody and today we are lucky enough to be joined by a very special guest. It is first year men's head basketball coach, Micah Shrewsbury. Coach, thank you so much for being here and spending some time with us today. Yeah, happy to be here, glad I could join. Yeah, well we are as well, we're very excited for this. So, uh, first question, let's just get right into it. So, you're an Indiana guy, your first coaching job, IU South Bend, and you've kind of said that Notre Dame was a dream job of sorts. So, about a year in, How's that dream going so far? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, right? Like, um, coaching basketball is more about, more than about just wins and losses. And there are things and benefits that I get from being here. Um, you know, I get a chance, our first game, I had probably close to 40 family members that were here. And now every weekend, a lot more family get to come up. And, and just being close to family is really important. Um, but also just the environment in Notre Dame has been great and unbelievable mentors that we have here that are leading our athletic department, Jack and Pete, uh, but you also have great coaches that you work with alongside of. You get to pick their brain, uh, get to grab ideas from them, and uh, I've enjoyed being a part of that group. Well, I'm, we're really glad that you're enjoying it. We are certainly enjoying having you on campus as well. Um, but let's look back at Penn State a little bit, right? You picked up a program that was kind of struggling. You got them their first NCAA tournament victory in over 20 years. And coming to Notre Dame, it's somewhat of a similar situation. I mean, this team had three conference wins last year. Looking at the job you did in Happy Valley of kind of building that program and building that culture, are there any similarities and differences that really stand out to your job here in South Bend so far? Yeah, there there have been a lot. Uh, we've really tried to follow the same game plan that we did once we got there at Penn State, right? I, a lot of the staff that was with me at Penn State is here with me now, and mm -hmm. we have a blueprint of how we want to do it and how we want to get this program back to the NCAA tournament. And um, it started in different ways, right? We had a few more guys that were returning at Penn State than we had here, but for us to be able to get a few transfers in, guys that we're going to have for a few years, add some freshmen, and then start with recruiting um, really heavily is going to be really important. So the groundwork's being laid. There is a plan in place, right? Like, trust me, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm not flying by the seat of my pants. There's a plan in place for us to get there because, like, it's important for me. It's important for our players. But it's important for the Notre Dame students out of here. I want, I want you guys to feel a part of supporting your basketball team going to the NCAA tournament. And I want our alumni to feel the same way. You mentioned those young guys, right? And this team obviously has no shortage of those. But let's focus on some of the older guys for a little bit. How important are those older guys in kind of helping to build the groundwork, even though, even though they know they may not be here you know, once, those, once that comes to fruition? But how have some of those guys really helped mentor the young guys and be some leaders in this locker room? Yeah, I think, you know, and that's the hard part, right, for, for a guy that's older that may not get to see it through because this may could be his last year. Um, but, you know, we, we talk about those old guys. Matt Zone has been an unbelievable kind of mentor, uh, but he's also been a great ambassador for Notre Dame for the rest of our team. Um, from day one, he has put his arms around everybody brought everybody in and welcomed everybody in when it could have just as easily said no I'm, I'm a Notre Dame guy I've been here like you guys are new like you guys might be coming to try and take my position right we're, we're all competing for something he's welcomed everybody but he's also opened the doors and opened their eyes to what it is to be a Notre Dame student and you know without him right our team you know isn't as close doesn't have as, as good of bonds and that's just simply him being selfless and you need that so now the younger guys see that um, and they start to embody that and now they create and carry that culture forward so you know maybe he doesn't get to see the fruits of, of his labor but he doesn't get to experience but he gets to see it in what we do in the future that's awesome really good that a guy like that can really be a leader in the locker room but with the young guys entering a, a new situation, you are as well, and I'm talking about the different conference that you're in now. Yeah. You were in the Big Ten for a while, now you're in the ACC, and we're a few games in here, so how's that gone? Is there a big difference? Have you had to adjust your coaching style a little bit, or how's that gone? There, there is, there's a big difference. Um, 
in terms of style of play. Like the ACC is a lot faster, yeah. more athletic. Uh, the Big Ten's, you know, the league's a little slower, more physical, more big guys that are dominating inside. So the the leagues are, are a little bit different. Um, we weren't like we didn't have those big guys at Penn State. Right? We didn't have a, a Zach Eady or a Hunter Dickinson. So we didn't play as traditional as we played about as different as a Big Ten team could play. And that worked for us, right? We, we posted our point guard a lot and we shot a bunch of threes. We, we set the uh, Big Ten record for most threes in a season last year. So like, you know, I'm, I think a little different. I try to be a little different, like, you know, you don't have to necessarily conform to what people say you have to do. So, like, we play a little differently now, mm -hmm. um, just strictly because of our team. Like, we play lower possessions. We're a tough, gritty, hard-nosed defensive team when all the rest of the teams in the ACC are fast-paced and up and down the court. So, um, I don't know, every, every once in a while I like to throw a little, little uh, wooden spoon in the wheel and stop it and slow it down and say, like, you can do things a little bit differently. Yeah, absolutely. This past weekend uh, against Boston College on Saturday, we saw the team unveil some new sneakers, um, specifically for the Coaches versus Cancer initiative. Can you talk a little bit about how that sneaker idea re really came to fruition and also just about the Coaches versus Cancer initiative in general? Yeah, the, the Coaches versus Cancer initiative has been going on for a really long time, and that's something that all of us, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three coaches have really kind of rallied behind. Um, where we're really just bringing forward awareness, right? Like, you know, you see coaches in suits. We don't really wear suits anymore, so now it's it's a surprise when you see a coach in a yeah. suit, but he also has tennis shoes on as well. It's like, why is that coach doing that, right? And now they're talking about it throughout the games, and it just creates and raises awareness, and it's a part of different initiatives that we have. Even in the summer, we do something, um, Notre Dame, to raise money for, for cancer. So that's a big deal for us. Um, the guys like got a chance to, you know, work with a local artist. Jerry Barker is a senior at South Bend St. Joe's. Um, he did it. He's an unbelievable artist, and he got with those guys and really talked about what their passions were, what uh, what motivates them, like uh, what are the things that they think about maybe when they're playing basketball. And he created that onto their shoes. And to see it, to look at it, um, to see what guys like all those things that that kind of brings them back to, to what grounds them, what floors them, what's their why of why they're playing basketball was cool to see. Um, but he did an unreal job with those. And uh, those are, he, he did a pair for me and uh, I wore them one time for the game and now they're, I'm putting them up like they're the collector's items. They're going to be sitting in a trophy case somewhere. Well, that's really cool that you guys could kind of connect with the South Bend community, especially for a good cause. That's really good to hear. Let's look at this team a little bit. We've had some some tough, really close losses, but but that says something about the effort that this team plays with. They've been in basically every single conference game has gone down to the wire. Um, but with those tough losses, it's kind of difficult to take those sometimes. So, how do you, as a coach, kind of try to try to reframe those in a positive light and kind of keep the young guys and keep this team on board to try to keep building towards that culture? Yeah, I, I think you know. Part of it, one, is they continue to be close, right? Like, um, I, I think the gut-wrenching part for everybody is, one, start of the year, nobody had any expectations yeah. for us, right? And then you start to watch us play, and it's like, man, these guys are actually in games. Man, they might have a chance to win, and then we don't pull it out, and it's like, why did I hope and why did I believe, you know? Like, but these guys are, are fighting their tails off. So, like, for me, as a coach, like I'm always driven to try and get them over the hump. Like what's one small thing that we can do to now win this game, right? Like winning's really hard. Winning close games is really hard. You gotta learn how to win. And that's what we're doing right now. And, and <clears throat> at some point in time, like it's gonna click for us. We're gonna win one of these close games and then it's gonna trigger like, okay, here's the things that we had to do and the things we had to do well and continue to do those things, right? So we keep winning these close games. But all of these experiences have been great for us, right? They, I hate losing, so like, they really suck, like, like yeah. to lose like this. But um, it also gives you the hope to come back the next day. If we were getting beat by 30 every game, 
Like, it'd be really hard to motivate somebody for the next game. But it's like we're right there. We're, we're a bounce or two away from turning some of these losses to wins. So that keeps driving us as a group and as a coaching staff to, like, let's do everything we can to get the next one. Well, it is a testament to you and your coaching staff just how close all these games have been. At the beginning of the season, I don't really think anyone imagined Notre Dame to have the lead against Miami with eight minutes left or to play NC State up the entire game or to beat Virginia by 20. No one was expecting that. But looking over these next few months here and at, at the close of the ACC regular season, um, we have three more home games, and two of them happen to be night games on a Saturday night. So how can we kind of get the students involved there and kind of create a good atmosphere at Purcell to, to really cheer on the boys and get the job done. Yeah, I, I think, you know, part of that, and, and it's, you know, it, it's give or take, right? We have to do our part to, like, get more people there and get them energized and, and feel a belief in what we're doing and how we're building towards everything going forward. And, like, we're going to play as hard as possible. We're going to represent, you know, this university the, the best way. But, yeah, maybe that, that one or two extra people that come, right, maybe that cheer that, because that, we really feed off of that. Like, our guys really feed off of the crowd and the fans. And um, there were a couple moments and instances in the Miami game when it was as loud as I had heard it all year. Um, and we really feed off of that, right? Maybe that's the push that we need to win that game, to win the next game. And now, yeah, hey, maybe those are the last two couple home games we have this year but that pushes us into next year and who we're gonna be in the future and it keeps that excitement going mm -hmm. for like, we're making this push to get to the tournament and our students and our crowd is a huge part of being with us and doing that together. Well, hopefully we can get the Irish fans involved in those last few games. And one with this final question. What, what identity do you want this team to have to the fans, to the students, to the alumni, to even the opponents we're playing? As you wind out your first year here as men's head basketball coach, what identity do you want this team to have at the end of the season and going forward into the future? Yeah, like it, it's it's really interesting. So, you know, as we start to move into February, and I showed our guys this yesterday, um, as before we practiced, and I showed them a, a picture of sheep and grazing, right? And, and sheep, when they eat, when they graze, they're all separate. They're all doing it to themselves. They got their heads down. They're not carrying a, a look of force to them. And then I showed them a pack of lions and how lions kind of hunt together. They're in a pack. They all had their heads up. They're all going in one direction, but they all have one goal too. And that's to help everybody have success, right? Like a lion, um, you know, maybe it, it, it attacks a, an elephant or something. It's gonna feed not just that lion, it's gonna feed the entire pack, right? That's how I said we have to attack this month. We have to attack it together with our heads up, with confidence, but we have to do it together in a way that we all feed off of each other. And that's who we want to be. We want to be a tough, disciplined, and together team. And like things are going to change. We're, we may not always be the same offensively as the, season, as the seasons go, as the years go on, as we add more pieces. Um, but we're always going to be a tough, disciplined, gritty, together team um, that gets the job done. And that's, you know, that's who I want Notre Dame to know that's who this group is going to be forever. Coach, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. From Micah Shrewsbury, Trey Cody, signing off for NDTV here from the Duncan Student Center. And as always, go Irish.